Imagine killing your servants so that they can accompany you in the afterlife. As the home of the many pharaohs, the Queen of Sheba, Hannibal Barca, and Mansa Musa, Africa deserves our full attention. It has stories to tell us and cultural riches to share with us. Africa is where paganism, Christianity, and Islam left their trails and created a cultural fusion unique to the continent. Some modern countries are popular tourist destinations, while others are war-torn lands still unable to industrialize. This polarity of Africa can be traced to ancient times. Egypt was by far the most culturally and historically significant part of the ancient world. The stories of pharaohs and pyramids have regaled us for many years. However, the tales of ancient Egypt are often narrated to us through the lenses of foreigners, especially in biblical and Quranic narratives. The Old Testament emphasizes the role of Egypt's brutal leaders who forced the exile of Israelites. These texts often paint the Egyptian pharaohs as the most ruthless monarchs the world has ever seen. While these accounts are somewhat exaggerated, they cannot be outright refuted. Like any other civilization, Egypt had its fair share of good and bad rulers. Let us take a look at the most diabolical pharaohs in Egyptian history. First Dynasty while not precisely one pharaoh, most of Egypt's first dynasty can be paired together for their heinous, insensitive, and self-centered ideas. A fascinating thing about the first dynasty pharaohs was their obsession with life and fear of death. Most pharaohs, especially Horaha, Jer, and Den, were fixated on the afterlife. The Egyptians believed that Ka, the life source, would continue to exist perpetually. The Ka was associated with the body, hence the mummification. Since these people wanted company in the next phase of life, they made the practice of human sacrifice commonplace. After a monarch's death, servants were sacrificed, and their corpses were sent to his tomb to accompany him in the afterlife. Since the Egyptians associated their leaders with divinity, they needed servitude for mortals. And by killing them, the Egyptian government ensured their pharaohs were comfortable. Animal and human bodies have been found in the tombs of various leaders. The tomb of Jer contains 338 individuals. Fortunately, the practice died out with the first dynasty. Khufu The Great Pyramid of Giza Who has not seen the image of the ancient Egyptian monument? It graces calendars, wallpapers, and utilities of various kinds. Obtaining cultural ubiquity is not an easy task for an old architectural wonder, but the pyramids have somehow managed to lodge themselves in our collective conscience. The pyramids were commissioned during the Old Kingdom period by Khufu. The second pharaoh of the Fourth Dynasty, Khufu was remembered in bits and pieces, which is typical of ancient figures. The most prominent description of his reign survives in Herodotus's writings, which refers to him as Cheops. Till the death of Ramsonitis, the priests said Egypt was excellently governed and flourished greatly. But after him, Cheops succeeded to the throne and plunged into all manner of wickedness. He closed the temples and forbade the Egyptians to offer sacrifice, compelling them instead to labor, one and all, in his service, writes Herodotus. The ancient Greek historian, known for his text, Histories, paints a vivid picture of Egypt in his second book, Euterpe. However, it is essential to understand that Herodotus wrote about Khufu two millennia after his death. Herodotus painted Khufu as an evil tyrant, a profile that would influence later historians' writings on the subject. Herodotus claims that Khufu forced most of the Egyptian population into slavery since he required a workforce of 100,000 men every three months. Modern engineers and scholars argue about the validity of Herodotus's profile. The pyramids in Egypt are well aligned and proportioned, making it difficult to believe that slaves built them. The pyramids must have required individuals of exceptional architectural and engineering knowledge. Herodotus also says that the pyramid was 800 feet tall, another inflated claim. Herodotus may have exaggerated certain aspects of history, but that does not mean he is entirely wrong. A particular claim makes the reader roll his eyes. The wickedness of Cheops reached to such a pitch that when he had spent all his treasure and wanted more, he sent his daughter to the stews with orders to procure him a certain sum. How much, I cannot say, for I was not told. She procured it. The ancient historian's inhumane picture of Egypt is bound to stick in one's mind. However, there is no way to prove him wrong. He continues to be one of the most important historical sources on the subject. 
Even though he exaggerates for dramatic effect, one must remain open to the possibility of him telling part of the truth. Tutmos I Tutmos I, the third pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, ascended to the throne after the death of Amenhotep I. He is remembered for his building projects and tales of military excursions into Nubia and the Levant that contain gory visuals and demonstrations of his monarchical authority. His building projects express a desire for grandeur, an attribute of ambitious monarchs. He built many structures in the Karnak Temple Complex and enlarged it considerably. He also had a fourth pylon built, an obelisk in his honor. He also made statues in Abydos, one of the oldest ancient Egyptian cities, and was buried in the Valley of the Kings. The magnitude of his actions foretells a proud man with a large ego. When the Nubians rebelled against him, he traveled to meet them head-on, personally leading his men. Tipmos I was renowned for his cruelty, which was on full display on this occasion. He found the Nubian king and beheaded him with his hands. He sailed home with the Nubian king's mutilated head hanging from his ship's prow. Tutmos wanted to intimidate his rivals and potential rebels from crossing him again. However, his stunt added fuel to the fire. He led multiple excursions on Nubia and the Levant afterward. He also ravaged Syria from pillar to post. He subjugated the Nubian people by appointing civilian representatives that reported back to him. Nubia lost its independence and remained under the strict control of the Egyptian dynasties for multiple centuries. Tutmos I's primary reason for attacking Nubia might have been gold deposits, which the Egyptians exploited and enjoyed thoroughly. Akhenaten Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV, the tenth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, is a universally hated figure. Akhenaten is known for his obsession with controversy and for subverting traditional Egyptian religion. It should be noted that religion was a very different concept in the ancient world. To put it more strictly, it was not a concept. For instance, the Hindu word commonly translated to religion, dharma, is closer to tradition than religion. The idea of religion as a distinct discipline of life emerged with secular humanism in the Renaissance. If you think people can be fickle about the subversion of their religious beliefs in the 21st century, imagine how the ancient Egyptians, who had not separated religious values from cultural values, would have felt. During Akhenaten's reign, Egypt was a polytheist region. The pharaoh, a fan of the priesthood of Amun-Ra, enforced his religious will in public places like temples, military, and schools. Statues were thrashed, inscriptions were tarnished. The pantheon of Egyptian gods was under attack. He also wanted to move his capital from Thebes, so he ordered the construction of a new city, Akhenaten, modern-day Amarna. The move away from the city might have signaled his issues with the religious hierarchy. Egyptian priests had enjoyed a lot of public authority during this time, and it is impossible to imagine them as his allies. While his disregard for the public is evident, his barbaric and uncouth nature rears its head in this tale. According to the archaeological findings, Akhenaten hired young slaves to do the work. A decade-old expedition revealed the remains of the workers. Archaeologists found that most workers had died before the age of 20. What makes the situation worse is that most of them had broken bones, even spines, and were severely malnourished. Historians think children as young as seven years old were exposed to rough manual labor. Scholars have posited various theories to explain the motives of these actions. Some people have mentioned a potential spouse, Kia, as opposed to the pharaoh's wife, Nefertiti, who played him like a fiddle. She might have used Akhenaten. Furthermore, an image shows him flirting with another man dressed like a king. Some historians conclude that he was gay while others think his co-regent might have been his wife, Nefertiti. Akhenaten's reign was marred by a lack of religious and social freedom. For a long time, no one knew about Akhenaten. It was not until the archaeologists discovered his body that things began to make sense. For one thing, he was erased from Egyptian records and was referred to as a heretic or a criminal, which precludes someone from being a monarch. People of Egypt referred to him as a murderous savage in some sources. Akhenaten's city was not completed during his reign, and his successor changed his name from Tutankhaten to Tutankhamun, the famous King Tut, to restore Amun's honor in the eyes of the people. Ramses II We end with Ramses II, the biblical villain. 
The third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty is often known for his association with the narrative of the Old Testament. The story of Exodus starts with a vindictive Egyptian pharaoh acting with prejudice towards the Israelites. Moses left the city, and the Israelites wandered the desert only to settle in Canaan. According to modern archaeological findings, the incredible journey never happened. The Israelites were not wandering Egyptians, they were in fact local Canaanites. However, considering that archaeologists make discoveries every day, you never know. According to the Bible, the Pharaoh had Israelites as slaves that worked until their backs broke. Supply Cities, Pithom and Ramses for Pharaoh As the vengeful Pharaoh that troubled the chosen people, Ramses II influenced popular culture in significant ways. He formed the basis of Percy Bysshe Shelley's poem, Ozymandias. My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. The lone and level sands stretch far away. While the Bible laments the Pharaoh's cruelty and barbaric tales, reality might have been quite different. In historical terms, Ramses II is considered one of the greatest pharaohs in Egyptian history. He had great success against people like the Hittites before the Bronze Age collapse. Before turning their attention to Egypt, the Sea Peoples had captured and destroyed several influential Canaanite cities, including the famous Hazor. Around 1650 BCE, the Hyksos claimed the territory of the ill-fated 14th dynasty and parts of the land controlled by its sturdier neighbor to the south, the 13th dynasty. This turn of events led to the creation of the 15th dynasty. The Hyksos managed to take advantage of a weak time in Egyptian history and conquered as far south as the river Thebes without subjugating themselves to the will of stronger pharaohs like their predecessors had. The Hyksos can tell historians much about the Canaanites that would not be otherwise known. The Egyptians kept careful records of their travails against the Hyksos, so there are interesting overlaps between the two cultures. But as far as we know, Ramses II never tortured innocent Israelites. However, if the biblical narrative is to be believed, Ramses II was a ruthless leader. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about ancient Egypt, check out our book, Middle Kingdom of Ancient Egypt, a captivating guide to the period of reunification and the Egyptian pharaohs who ruled. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.